Great. So yeah, thanks for having me here. It's actually uh, my very first Europite, and I have to say there is a great colleague of mine who has mentioned it quite so many times. So I said, okay, give it a try and try to submit your talk to the Europitan. And now I'm here in lovely Dublin. So thanks for having me. Um, I guess in the recent days, we have already seen a couple of things around Spotify, around GDPR, um, also about the downsides of, let's say, data science. So for me as a data scientist, sometimes GDPR feels like a burden, but also, of course, it's in the interest of consumers, or at least that it's how it's intended to be. So a couple of, or quite a while ago, it was, I guess, in December, it was a winter day. I just said to myself, okay, let's give it a shot and pull your GDPR data that Spotify has collected about you so far and just check it out and uh, try to make use of it. And this is how that whole thing developed. So maybe a couple of words about myself. So as you have already heard, my name is Marcel. So I'm a senior data scientist. I work for Innovex. So Innovex is some uh, IT project house in Germany. So I'm basically also uh, in Cologne. And what we do is basically pro projects in, in data science and application development, IT operations. So, and I also just uh, decided to start my own podcast. So this was actually back in September last year where I said, okay, I'm a real big fan of recommender systems. I like the technology. I also like its implications and I like to talk to people and exchange with them. So this is why I raised that podcast. Uh, where I basically talk to industry experts and, ec and experts from academia. And of course, I do build recommender systems myself. So for different clients in industry, I do cross-domain recommender systems. So I would like to know based on, for example, your listening behavior, what may be music or not music, but video material or audio books you might be interested in. And I've also done quite some, some few works in, in e-commerce. And yeah, that's basically it. So um, give the Rexpert uh, show definitely a try. Um, but actually, you are expecting something from me and not I am expecting from you to listen or to subscribe to my podcast. So now I should need to deliver a bit. So um, recommenders can grow complex. So this is a very good image that depicts the different complexities within the recommender system on a high level by Eugene Yan that I really, really love because it's so comprehensive and shows what you can really do in a system, but also um, how things flow through it. And maybe back to GDPR. So I have to admit I'm a big fan of Spotify and I guess I will be running into the risk of doing uh, uh, much of Spotify advertising here. Um, so bear with me on that side. Uh, I guess I have been using Spotify for already uh, 10 years now and there is a problem because I have that light songs playlist like many of you like have. So maybe just to ask at that point who is using Spotify actually. Okay, so there might be a couple of people who could make use of it, I at least hope. If not, there might be many complaints uh, during the weekend, but at least that's also good because that shows that people have tried to use my software. Um, another question where I would expect a couple of fewer hands. Who has actually requested his or her GDPR data recently from some platform? Or maybe not also recently. Okay, I see at least one, two, a couple of hands, nice. And maybe now it comes a weird question and then I will finish off the questioning part. Who is a semi-professional or professional salsa dancer? At least who is into salsa cubana? A bit. Ah, okay, I will come back to you <laughs> by the end. Okay. Okay, okay, but, but maybe this is going to entertain you, yeah? <laughs> Thanks. Um, so, and what basically bugs me is, uh, you know, um, I guess back then when I did that project in December, I had maybe 1,800 songs as a large stack on my liked songs playlist. So it's every time like you um, listen to your Discover Weekly and you enjoy a song, then you just push on that heart button and it goes on top of your liked songs playlist. And then from time to time, I go into the playlist and I listen to the most recent songs, which are maybe, let's say the 10 or 50 most recent. So this is at least very nicely describing my common behavior. So I listen a lot to the Discover Weekly playlist, but I also listen a lot to the songs that I've liked in the past, which is kind of obvious. But the problem is there are so many songs and I'm just using so few of them. And um, I guess maybe Spotify, I hope so, has also recognized that problem to some certain part. 
because sometimes, from time to time, I experience that somehow the shuffling function activates in my Spotify uh, when, when I'm listening to Spotify from my, listening, from my liked songs playlist. And I wonder about, okay, why do they do that? Maybe they have recognized that problem about people that are not experiencing music that is further down their liked songs playlist stack, maybe something like that, and then try to re-engage people with what they have liked in the further distant past. Um, at Innovex, we also say, of course, we want to use technology that inspires our clients, but we also want to use technology that inspires ourselves. And this was where I started. And since I also have some kind of economics background, uh, economists like these graphs, which go into two different directions and maybe just uh, have these four quadrants in this. We have just that one quadrant, but we could also check out the other directions. And what I, would, what I basically did there is I asked myself, I mean, there are, um, automated personalized playlists on Spotify already. One of them I already mentioned, which is, which is the Discover Weekly playlist, but there are further. So there is also that on repeat, which says that it exploits your listening behavior of the past 30 days and basically compiles on a daily, on a daily basis a list that kind of is a collection of these 30 songs. And then repeat rewind goes a bit further. Um, so it just says it goes beyond that one month, but it seems like it doesn't go so far. And then of course, it's a time of the year by the end of the year where everybody on all the social media is posting uh, their top songs of year X. Like for example, last time 2021. So what you have li listened most, what are your favorite artists and so on and so forth. But for me, there was, as I said, something missing. So something for rediscovery that exploits even data that goes far beyond that point. So, and this is when I said, okay, what about a personalized playlist for long-term music rediscovery? And I felt that was somehow missing. And then I just came up and said, okay, maybe GDPR could be of benefit there. I even haven't seen my data at that point, but this was some kind of a parallel process. Sometimes you first come up with an idea and then you try to search for the data. Sometimes you first have the data and try to come up with an idea, but at least I had the problem framed. So let's now solve it. So what I basically did is I requested my GDPR data from Spotify. Um, and at least there were, of course, a couple of files provided in the nicely, provided in nice JSONs. And there were two interesting files because there was one file, this is uh, shown at the top, which was basically uh, collecting all my liked songs that I have collected so far. And on the other hand side, there was also my streaming history of the past 12 months. So I knew which song I have listened to at which time, for how long, from which artist, with which URI and so on. So what we are going to do is we use these two JSONs, and it's not mainly only two JSONs because it depends on how many streams you have performed so far, and we use Python. And we use Python to basically induce a user music taste profile. So I basically create a profile about my own taste based on my streaming behavior of the past year. And there were, I guess, 15K songs, so quite some songs that I have listened to which could give me some evidence about my music taste. And then what I do is I use that music taste to search in the space of songs that I haven't listened to for more than 12 months ago. So I ignore everything that I have listened to in the past 12 months, but what is still in my liked songs playlist, and I use basically my music taste profile as a filter within that space to retrieve what is closest to my annual or current streaming behavior, but I, which I haven't listened to in the past 12 months to kind of let me rediscover the past of myself, for example. And I do this, of course, with fetching some rich additional data from the Spotify web API. And in the end, what we do is we create a playlist, which is basically just a simple uh, Pandas data frame, and then we upload it to create our own playlist on Spotify. So, and then we basically solved it and also have a playlist for long-term rediscovery of music. And I definitely agree, there is still some, a, a lot of blank space there, which I might address with one of my ideas by the end. Okay, so maybe just a short discovery of the GDPR. So there's an article 15 of GDPR, so let's do some law. And the GDPR article 15, what does it says in the end is, the information that you are going to request shall be provided in a commonly used electronic form. Sounds like JSON, as I already mentioned, it was JSON. But of course, and I saw these three, four, five hands here in the audience that said, okay, I have requested my data in the past. You can also do that with other platforms and maybe there is stuff enough for future projects. So I did it with uh, Twitter, 
I did it with LinkedIn. I also did it with Instagram. I mean, there's no big magic there, but I just want to show you most of the times you can get your data in two to three steps, and then it will be provided, I guess, as part of a daily batch job, which generates the data and provides it, and then you can basically download it a couple of days later. So, okay, but I'm supposed to talk about Spotify, not about Twitter, LinkedIn, or any other platform. So how did the process look like in the example of Spotify? So for Spotify, there are at least two different options. So you can request your, they call it standard data or your extended so-called full history data. What's the difference there is, as I already said, the standard data only contains your streaming history of the past 12 months, though it's a bit tinier. And the extended is really the full history. So when requesting my full history, I really got my streaming history that covered since these, um, since I joined Spotify in 2013, 2012 as a user, it was about 220,000 streams that I completed so far. So the first part, the standard, I guess in my case, took a couple of days to be provided. The second one is a bit more of an extensive process, extensive in comparison, because you need to write an email and then you get a confirmation. And then after, in my case, it was two weeks, I was provided the file for download and there I had all my data that I could use. But this case will be focused on your standard data so that if you like to use it, you can easily get started there. So how does it look like? As I said, you get some uh, nicely JSON. They are not too comprehensive in terms of the um, um, breadth of information. So what you basically have there and what we are mainly focusing on here are these streaming histories JSON. So they are batched by 10,000. So um, therefore we see two because I had, I guess, 15 or 16,000 songs there. And you have your library. And this your library that we see here already or not already, it directly relates basically to that playlist. So it basically resembles this liked songs playlist where I say I have difficulties to re-engage in content that is a built order and you directly have it here. What is a bit unfortunate about this is that you don't also have URIs provided in that streaming history, though you have it in the extended history. So there you have a bit more breadth of information. So what I did here basically was some matching by joining artist name and track name, and then finally match it with this one where I could also join these two things together. And it worked, but this is always a bit, yeah, not so nice. So it would be greater to directly join it via the URIs, but this is very specific. So, and then as a data scientist, I like to look into the data and just check it out, what is in there. And basically this was already where the idea somehow evolved of how I could also use it to create my own playlist recommender. So basically, as I said, a year, I had a couple of 15,000 streams. Interestingly though, what was that along these 15,000 songs, there were only 4,500 unique songs. So, which means that on average, I'm listening to the same song for three times in a year. Um, I don't know what this says about myself, but mm, it's up to you. So, um, and what we also are going to do is um, we discount all the songs, all the streams that we just have listened to for less than 30 seconds, because this is not really a strong signal. And of course, I want to exclude um, weak signals in building my, my user profile. Of course, maybe you can also use that data to create some kind of um, the inverse taste and use that somehow, so something up for further work, definitely. What was interesting though, so along these 1,800 songs, there were 60% that I haven't listened to in the past 12 months. So basically these 1,100, 200 songs were actually constituting the corpus from what I wanted to retrieve my songs using my taste profile. So there are also some, some, some nice histograms you can build from it, but I will skip that. So let's come to the core part. I said, now we have the data, we use Python standard Jupyter notebooks to process the data to get some insights about what was going on there. And now comes the more interesting part, we was because we want to enrich the data. As I said, we want to build a music taste profile. What I can do so far is that I can, of course, say what is my um, most popular artists or what are the most popular artists or something like that, but there is not that much more. I could also, for example, say when are my core using times and for example, to say in the morning, I'm rather listening to these artists and in the evening, I'm rather listening to the other uh, artists. So um, maybe context aware recommender systems might ring the bell there if you have heard about this. 
Um, so I wanted to enrich the data. And there is a nice um, Spotify web API that I used for that purpose. First, of course, you need to register as a developer, but it's also not such a big effort. And then you create an app there. And this app you are later on going to use in order to upload your playlist that you created on your machine and to make it available in your own Spotify account or also to provide the service to others. Because I guess for one um, app, you can register up to, uh, I guess it says 25 people that are using this app. So for a small group of people, I haven't found so far anyone who is interested in it, but maybe I will do soon. So there comes the interesting part, because now we know artists, we know the song names, but this is not leading to much more. So what I basically did, I used that data and basically queried additional audio features for each of the tracks from my liked songs playlist and also for what I have been listening to in the past year. So, and this was kind of the key point and this uh, API is, is quite nice because it shows you some uh, more depth about certain songs. So to give you an example, so there are uh, various, I guess you can't read it here, but you get, for example, the tempo of a song. You get it in beats per minute to just get an understanding of how fast or how slow a song is. You get its danceability, you get its acousticness or speechiness or all this stuff. So it's not so many, but it's at least interesting features. So it's 10 to 15 features that we used there. And I was already able to say, okay, so given my behavior in the past 12 months and given the features of what is on my liked songs playlist, how did it change somehow? And then I could already understand, okay, I have been turning a bit to less acoustic music, but to more danceable music. So maybe I've been a bit more happier in that year, you could infer or something like that. I'm not sure. Um, and of course, as always, we need to transform somehow the data because it's on different scales. So what I basically did is for each of the songs that I have listened to in the last year, I basically fetched the features and I also uh, counted or accumulated to how often I listened to it. And of course, now I don't want to have a song that I listened to, and this was the case, 150 times, for example, to have such a large impact. And this is why I sometimes dampen the data a bit and their log transform or other transformations can help you a bit. Because in the end, my user profile is nothing else than like a weighted average and weighted by the number of normalized counts of the features of the songs. So I'm basically trying to represent myself in the space of the item features, meaning that I now get a danceability distribution for myself or a acousticness distribution over myself. And this one I could then use as a search query in that space of not or underexplored items. So and by underexplored, I mean those that I want to retrieve from. So those that are older than these 12 months. So yeah, and this basically boils down to the thing, I am what I listen to. So in another context, so as I mentioned, I've also worked uh, on, on e-commerce recommender systems. So there's a blog post that I wrote about deep learning for uh, vehicle recommendations for a larger platform in Germany. And what you see here is that we also can apply this in, in different settings. So what you see here is we have a user, that user interacts with cars, for example, by contacting a dealer or clicking or viewing or printing. And of course, you can collect all these events and they kind of resemble different um, degrees of preference for the content. Of course, if I contact a dealer, maybe in order to, to arrange for a test drive, test ride, then this might be a stronger feedback than just clicking a vehicle page. And what I can then do is basically to take all these features that are connected to the items, so those things that I want to recommend to the user, and basically uh, create statistics over those interactions that are also somehow weighted in order to come up with a probability distribution for the user, such that I'm able to represent the user in the space of the items. So that, for example, I have a mean price for the user that I could use to say, okay, that user might maybe not be interested in cars that are pricier than 20 or 30K. Yeah. And then what data scientists, especially if they work in uh, recommenders, love, is the cosine similarity. Because you might have asking you so far, okay, but now how, how are you actually comparing these two things with each other? And there what we normally do is we have those embeddings. In my case, we don't even have an embedding because we don't really train anything there, but this is not too bad. But we can still apply the cosine similarity there. Some underlying assumptions that I'm making by doing this is 
that all these features are of equal importance. Even this might be something we could question in the future and that might also be able to learn from your own data because you might rather be interested in songs that you are listening to which are closer to your own danceability or your own tempo and you disregard those that are far off your mean, let's say, instrumentalness or something like that. So in this way you could also say, okay, I will learn a music taste profile for a user and also arrange the, um, the, the retrieval process in my item space by um, paying more attention to those features that matter to the user. So, and how does it finally look like? So we basically created that user taste profile. I guess we have a 15 dimensional space, so it's not too large. I mean, if you are dealing with embeddings and we are somewhere rather in the hundreds of size, so this is a very small size here. Um, so we basically have that user representation in that multi-dimensional space now, and we have all that items there that we could also represent in the same space. And then what we typically do is we compute the cosine similarity for all of them. Don't do this for production systems where you have millions or even more items, because then you're better off with using approximate nearest neighbor search. What we are doing here is really exact nearest neighbor search, because we can afford it if there are just 1,000 or 2,000 items where each has a dimensionality of 50. So, and now comes the most boring chart and the most self-evident. Of course, the red ones are the ones that look good. And you see, um, if I now sort all these songs that I haven't discovered from my liked songs playlist, then you see it just goes off. But still those that are on the list, but the, um, let's say, worst ones have a quite high cosine similarity. So in absolute terms, maybe not in relative terms of 0 0.6 or something like that. So makes sense so far. And now it's up to you. How many do you want to retrieve? How many top K items do you want to take from, from, that, from that candidates? In my case, I said, okay, I just want to take 20. And then you basically had your songs, you had their URIs. So now comes maybe the easy or light part. And there I made use of Spotify. So Spotify just makes it for some certain things a bit easier to deal with the Spotify web API, especially when it comes to um, the part of <clears throat> doing authentication because uh, sometimes I feel very lazy about this stuff. Maybe I shouldn't. Um, at least I used Spotify, Spotify then in the end to just simply um, create a playlist in my account and upload a corresponding image that I kind of borrowed a bit from the style of the previous Spotify images and then used for my own individual playlist. So, and this will bring us maybe just to share a bit of what the result was in the end in my case. So therefore, what I will do is I will quickly switch to uh, this notebook here. So what we can see here, um, you will all find this material in the corresponding um, GitHub repo. So there's a repo that's called Like to Play. And in Like to Play, um, there is, we had just that session before about good and uh, well documentation. I'm not sure whether I'm doing that good here, but at least I show you how to set up, set up your environment, how to uh, activate it and how to install the package and then make use of it yourself. But don't forget to further qu or query your data, your GDPR data and request it from Spotify because of course you will need it because data science and this might not be even be regarded as data science because it's rather a nice analytical case um, is senseless without data most of the time. Um, so what we now see, you will also find these notebooks there. If um, So I will skip the part of creating the playlist, uploading the playlist. So let's look into my extended history. So as I said, I requested both data sets. So the standard set and the extended set. So and then I basically looked into my extended history that really covers from 2022 back to 2013 to just check out, okay, so how are we actually doing and how are these 20 songs that I now retrieved compared to my listening behavior? So how old are these songs? How far have they been in the past? When did I consume them the last time? And what you see here, so these are basically the URIs of these 20 songs, is, um, I mean, the top song I really consumed a lot um, was in my overall history, and the least likely song at this position was only consumed four times. Nevertheless, it was on the liked songs playlist, and it was among the 20 songs that was closest to my current music taste profile. 
And um, I could also check when I listened to them the last time, but this was basically my distribution. So also another not too fancy plot. I will definitely check out that pie with you that was presented yesterday. But what we basically see here, it works. So it's not only music that was really tightly before that streaming history, so from 2020. It was music that kind of covers um, all the time that I've been using Spotify, especially from the years 2016 to 2018. So really some older songs I should re-engage with. So, and this actually brings me to the end of my talk, but now you might also question, so give us something more concrete, show us what you have found there. And now you come into the game because um, I wanna at least share with you how it now looks like on the platform because if we just go on my Spotify Rediscover playlist, then you will find that playlist. And the very first one was actually a nice one because I did some Salsa Cubana classes quite a while ago. And there was a song that was really, yeah, um, every time, kind of in every class, this one was played. And it was Teva Adolea con Maelo Ruiz. Welcome to the Rediscover Past. <laughs> Que no te guste ser llevada por la hueva. Entiendo cómo tú pretendes ser feliz. Con ese idiota que te trata. Yeah, I was shooting for that to get already some applause before the end of my talk. Thanks for that. Um, maybe I should not only re-engage with the music, but I should also re-engage with taking further classes because I was not sure whether I was doing my best job here on stage. But at least I tried, yeah? So I'm not afraid to make a fool of myself. Okay, so we have that rediscover past, but now you might mention, come on, this was very easy. Yeah, you took some weighted average, you took that weighted average to discover something that you have already seen so far. But I mean, we could go further. So we can think about extensions here. I mean, we could also, there is another endpoint that delivers the recommendations that Spotify also has there. I mean, we could now use these songs that we came up with as seeds for the recommender API. And this recommender API, you can feed with songs. So basically with up to five, uh, I guess, URIs for, for, for tracks on Spotify, but also with artists or um, with, um, with genres. So why not kind of inferring your genre distribution, your top genres, and then take those five from those 20 tracks as seeds and look what the recommender API might return you there. And this then might give you some uplift here and move that only rediscovery focused playlist more into the discovery space. At least this is what I'm going to try in the future. And yeah, maybe also thinking about how you can update it more frequently without asking all the time for your uh, provision of data by Spotify. Yeah, uh, as I said, you will find all the material in the GitHub page. There's also a corresponding uh, blog post, your rediscover past proposing a new personalized playlist for Spotify. And of course, if you have questions, meet me at the conference. I mean, it's the last day, but it's not too late. Uh, on Innovex, uh, we also have nice uh, research and case studies. So we also do research that we um, show at the Recommender Systems Conference. And of course, please, please, please listen to my podcast. That's it. Thank you. Thanks, Marcel. Uh, we have a couple of minutes for questions. If anyone has some, please come to the front. Uh, no, I, I, I would have one while we wait. Um, were you happy with the, the, the new playlist? Or um, was there someone there you're like, oh, I don't want to listen to that again? I mean, the way that I, that I, that I composed the playlist, let's, let's be honest, it's relatively naive. Yeah? It's, but it, it, it's a first shot. So therefore, these songs, they were not of some certain notion. I mean, they're of totally different genres. I mean, there's salsa cubana music next to some really more melancholic music. And then there is pop and there is rock. So there's, it spans kind of from U2 over Killers to Maelo Ruiz. So, and this might be a bit irritating. So in that sense, I'm not really satisfied, but at least I have some hypothesis how, how to deal with it. Yeah. Hello. Um, I have a similar question um, regarding all the different uh, features of the music. Um, so I have a very diverse music taste mm -hmm. and uh, some of the genres involve no vocals at all. 
uh, there's a lot of vocals mm -hmm. and uh, I probably would hate a playlist with only music that is right in the center of those two. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> does this recommendation uh, algorithm account for that? Like, would you still get the extreme outliers of your music mm -hmm. taste? Mm -hmm. Um, no, it doesn't account for it yet, or maybe only implicitly, because of course, um, if your taste might be in the middle, but due to that being too centric and too out of average, this might be reflected by mismatches in the other dimensions of your profile. And then since the cosine similarity kind of incorporates all those different dimensions, that might account for it, might. yeah. So nothing explicit, but it might work implicitly. If not, you have to put in some more brain work there. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. Okay, I think we'll wrap up now. The lightning talks start in five minutes. So once again, thank you, Marcel.